Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to solve for a variable inside a formula, something that we use a lot in physics or chemistry or biology. And uh, what we want to do here is use the very same techniques as the way we solve linear equations, but in some cases there's a few more additional tricks. So let's see what we have waiting for us here. On the first one, we have the perimeter of a rectangle is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, and we're supposed to solve for L, for the length. So here we use the same technique. Move all the uh, terms that have the variable you're looking for to the left side and everything else to the right side. So we're going to move this term to the left side. Again, when we cross the equal sign, it turns negative or we change the sign. So this becomes minus 2L is equal to 2W. And when the P goes across the right side, it becomes a minus P. And then the last step in this case is divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of the variable you're looking for. So divide the left side by minus 2, divide the right side by minus 2. And so this becomes L is equal to, so 2 divided by minus 2 is minus W, and minus P divided by minus 1 half is a plus 1 half P. So in this case, we could write this as L is equal to 1 half P minus W. And that's probably a good form to leave it in. So on this next one, we have an equation, 1 over f equals 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. And we're supposed to solve that for s prime. That's an equation we use with lenses, lenses and mirrors. So if we're going to solve this for s prime, what I want to do here, before I get rid of the fractions, I want to move that term to one side of the equation and everything else to the right side of the equation. So I'm going to make this go to the left. So I have 1 over s prime, and that of course becomes a negative, equals 1 over s minus 1 over f. And then I want to make this into a positive quantity, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So 1 over s prime equals 1 over f minus 1 over s. So when I multiply the right side by negative 1, I just simply switch the two around. Okay, now I want to go ahead and add these together, and of course they have different denominators, so I need to find a common denominator which will be the product of the two. So I can say, well, this is equal to 1 over Give myself a little bit more room, minus 1 over s. And so what I want to do is multiply both the top and the bottom by a, a variable that will give me the same common denominator. So in this case, I'm going to move the top, multiply the top and the bottom by s. And here I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by f. When I do that, you can see that both denominators are now the same, common denominators. So this can now be written as s minus f over f times s. All right, now the last thing I need to do is simply take the inverse of this, 1 over s prime gives me s, and then take the inverse of that. So from the result, I can then say that inverse s prime is equal to the inverse of this, which is f times s divided by s minus f. And that's the result of that problem. Okay, next, we take this equation, which is the equation uh, for gravity, that's the equation that Newton discovered. The force between the two objects with mass m1 and m2 with a distance of r between them can be calculated with this equation. And we're supposed to solve this equation for r. Now if you take a look at this, let's rewrite it just slightly. I'm going to write it like f is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r squared. And I can write this as s f over 1. So what I have now is two fractions that equal to each other. And when I have a situation like that, I can move things along, along the diagonal. I can move the r squared up here. I can move the f down here. I can move the g, the m1 or the m2, down here. So we can move things across the diagonal. So let me do, draw a little dashed line so you can see that. Diagonal like this, diagonal like that. So since I'm looking for r squared, I want to take r squared and move it in the upper left side right here. So I can move it across the diagonal. I can move the f down here. So this now becomes r squared divided by 1, I don't have to write that, is equal to g m1 m2 divided by f, just like that. Makes it really easy. Simply move things across the diagonal like that. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I can say that r is equal to the square root of g m1 m2 divided by f. And that's the answer for that one. On the last one right here, we have to solve that equation for x. Notice that x appears in the numerator and x appears in the denominator. So somehow, I have to move all the terms to an x to one side of the equation. 
Again, what I can do there is what I did here. I can move things across the diagonal. This is like 5 divided by 1. I can move the CX plus D over to that side of the equation. So this can become AX plus B is equal to 5 times, and we have to multiply in this case, 5 times CX plus D. Now let's get rid of the parentheses by disturbing the 5. And so I get AX plus B is equal to 5CX plus 5D. Now I'm ready to go ahead and move all the variables with an X to one side of the equation, everything else to the other side of the equation. So this becomes AX minus 5CX is equal to 5D minus B. Remember when you move things across the equal sign, the sign changes. On the left side, I can see that I can factor out an X. So this becomes X times A minus 5C is equal to 5D minus B. And then finally, I can divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the variable we're looking for. In this case, the coefficient is everything inside the parentheses. So I can divide the left side by A minus 5C. I can divide the right side by A minus 5C. In actuality, what I'm doing here again is moving things across the diagonal because you can see that I can simply take this and move it over here because when I do this, this cancels. And finally, I can say that x is equal to 5d minus b divided by a minus 5c. And that's how we do that. So some good examples of how to solve for a particular variable inside a formula.